Hey guys, Chris from Adaptivision here, and today we're going to be talking about how to prepare the trading account in your income statement. All right. So, what is the trading account? The trading account is an account that shows you the gross profit from your trading activities. Well, what's trading? Why do people start businesses? People start businesses to make a profit. Now, like yeah, we said uh, in another video that uh, that's not the only reason to start a business, right? We there was uh, on the syllabus there's actually an aspect called non-profit organizations, but we don't want to drift too much into the different reasons for starting business. Most people start businesses to make profit. Now, how do you know what what do you do, right? Well, most people sell items, they buy items and resell them to make a profit. And I want you to think about math for a second, right? There's a very simple formula in consumer arithmetic to calculate profit. And that's selling price minus cost price. And all the trading account is, is a very elaborate and technical version of this formula. That's all it is, right? I promise, I know a lot of you guys have been requesting this video because I know, I know trading accounts can seem very daunting. You have several items inside of there, lots of, little, lots of long sentences, cost of goods available for sale, cost of goods sold, what's the difference? When I was in Form 4, Form 5, I just memorized those things. I didn't understand what I was doing, but I knew how to do it, right? And I got by most of Form 5, Form 6, and even into UB, uh, my university days without really understanding what the trading account was doing. Even when I, it was only when I started teaching accounts when I had to go and really understand the material that I actually learned and understood what these things were. They were no longer just random words strung together, right? they actually took on a meaning. So I feel the pain. And a lot of times teachers teach you the full format in one fell swoop. In my opinion, that's not a good idea, but I'm, I'm not here to criticize any teaching methods. I don't know the people who are teaching you, and it's not my place to criticize them. What I wanna do is simply help you to understand, to better understand what it is you're supposed to do and why, right? Because I'm sure you guys, you, you guys who requested it and who are watching this video want to know, how do I do, how am I supposed to memorize this long format? What's the point of all of it? I promise by the end of this video, you will have a better understanding. Well, I'm hoping you will have a better understanding than you do right now. And if you have any other questions, please feel free to put them in the comment section below. Okay, all right. So I want to get into the material, right? So like I was saying, why do we start a business to make a profit? How do you calculate profit? You have two components. So like we said, selling price minus cost price. But that's for when you have a single item. For example, let's say, let's say you bought a phone, a mobile phone, an iPhone or whatever it is, and you paid, let's just say, well, I'm in Trinidad. So let's just say you paid $10,000 for this iPhone, a new iPhone, iPhone 10, whatever it is, right? <clears throat> and let's say you wanted to sell this to make more money. Now, obviously you're gonna have to sell at a higher price than which you bought it at. You won't sell, so you pay 10,000 for something, you're not gonna sell it for 9,000 or 8,000. You're losing money, that doesn't make any kind of sense. You're gonna sell it for like 11,000, 12,000, and the higher price you could get, the better, because you want to make more money rather than less, right? Now, where does the trading account come into this? The trading account is simply that part of the financial statement called the income statement that shows us our profit from trading activities. And trading activities, once again, are the buying and reselling of goods to make a profit, okay? So, and I did say earlier, the trading account is simply an elaborate version of the simple formula for profit, selling price minus cost price. Let's start by, let's start there one time, okay? So, what I have, guys, is I have some examples I created, um, and these are the ones that I do with my classes all the time. <coughs> So first things first, let's just um, maximize this page so we could read it a bit better, right? So the following companies all started operations on Jan 1st, 2016. They each purchased a quantity of stock on that date to sell in order to earn revenue and sold out all of their stock by the end of the month. Okay, good. Calculate their gross profits using a trading account format for the month ended Jan 31st, 2016. Okay, now just just so you know, I'm not going to be doing all three questions. I'm going to be doing one because I don't. Some of my recent videos have gone on to almost an hour, forty minutes. I want this video to not be that long, okay? And like I said, I promise this topic actually is not that hard. So, what we're going to do? The first thing you need to do is head up your statement, right? You need to put the name of the entity. In this case, I confuse which is how a lot of people feel about income statements. I'm confused, all right? So this is the, we'll just call it the trading account for now, right? We'll leave income statement for when we're doing full income statements. 
for the month and oops and the 31st Jan 2016 okay now let's get a little money call I'm going there now like I said I promised the income statement, the trading account is simply an elaborate version of a very simple formula, selling price minus cost price. So this company bought goods, right? Purchases of a th worth a thousand dollars. So they bought these goods and that thousand dollars is the cost price of the goods. That's what the goods cost. The sales revenue is the money they earned from selling all the goods. And remember the question said they sold out all of their stock. There's none left. So that $1,000 worth of goods was sold for $1,500. So the sales revenue is the selling price equivalent in this question. So all we have to do, what's the formula again? Selling price minus cost price. Or in the context here, sorry, <coughs> revenues minus expenses. So the sales revenue is $1,500. We're going to less, now it can be called different things. It could be called cost of sales or it could be called cost of goods sold. And like I said, this was one of these, those sentences which I just memorized off. I didn't understand what it meant. It's four simple words in the English language, and I speak English. Well, sort of. Anyhow, so it made no sense to me when I finally understood what this meant, how I couldn't understand what it was. And when I finally did, I'm like, look, I need to share this with everybody so that they understand what they're doing. So this is the selling price item. This is the cost price. This is the price at which the goods were sold, and this is the price at which they were bought. This is selling price, this is cost price, and all we have to do <coughs> is subtract. And here we have our gross profit. Sorry. So this is the profit that we make on the trading of these 1,000 goods. Right, these are the cost. This one thousand is the cost for which we purchase those goods. The cost of the goods that were sold. All right, and this fifteen hundred is the amount of money we made by selling this one thousand dollars worth of goods, which means we made a profit of five hundred dollars. Simple and straightforward, right? Cool. Now, yes, I hear what you're saying, but Chris, this is just this is not a trading account we've ever seen. What about stock? What about returns? What about carriage? one thing at a time. So the way I teach my students is I break it down into pieces, right? To me, it doesn't make sense to try to teach the whole thing one time. It's like if you have a, a nice burger. I know some of you all are vegan, so um, I'm, I'm not sure. A nice salad, <laughs> right? Whatever it is eating. You don't take the whole thing and stuff it in your mouth one time. You aren't showcases, right? Don't do that. You bite off piece, you enjoy that piece. You bite the next piece, you enjoy that piece too, and so you go. Right, so same thing with this. Now, yeah, you mightn't enjoy this. Enjoy this the same way you will enjoy food, good taste in food. But trust me. And as the years have gone by in my in my teaching, I realized that I could break down things that I've been teaching for years into smaller pieces and make things easier to understand. Right, a lot of times we as teachers get stuck in our ways and we forget teaching is supposed to evolve. Right, there comes a point where you can't break it down too much more. Anyhow, I'm rambling. Sorry about that. Let's get back on point. Okay, so. That is the first iteration of the trading account. Okay, so once again, an important detail in that question was that all the stock was stole out by the end of the month. Now let's see what happens in the next question. All right, the following companies all started operations January 1st, 2016. Okay, they each purchased a quantity of stock on that date to sell in order to earn revenue. All right, at the end of the month, they each had a quantity of stock unsold. Mm, different. Calculate their gross profits using a trading account format for the month ended Jan 31st, 2016. What is the significance of this statement in bold here? At the end of the month, month, they each had a quantity of stock that remained unsold. It simply means they did not sell out all of the goods that they bought. Uh, what's the implication therefore? Let's do a simple example. Let's say you bought two items. You bought two phones to sell to make a profit. You bought them at 20,000, sorry, 10,000 each. And you said, okay, look, I'm gonna sell these phones. The price I could get for it is about 12,000. So you bought two phones at 10,000. So you spent 20 and you sold one phone. So you made 12. So have you made a loss therefore? I mean, you spent 20, you only made back 12. So we made a loss. Nope, you made a profit. Why? How many phones did you sell? 
One. How much did you pay for that phone? 10,000. For how much did you sell it? 12. So you made a profit of $2,000. But what about the other phone? Have you sold it yet? No, you haven't. Can you make a profit on something you have not yet sold? No. And that is why we minus closing stock in the calculation of the cost of goods sold. If you have not sold an item, you cannot include it in your profit calculation. If you guys hear any chattering, there's a class going on right behind me. I'm sorry, but this is the only time I could have gotten to record my video, right? So <laughs> if you're hearing too much noise in the back, just let me know. I'll make sure to stay quiet. All right. Anyhow, so we're going to do I don't know, right? Um, for any trainees watching, I want doubles to its light. All right. If you're not training, you might catch that. Sorry about that joke, right? Kind of a bit of an inside joke. All right. So <clears throat> let's check it out. Oops. What's going on here? All right, so first to do, head up your income statement. Hi, hi do. Come on, capital D. Mm. Hi do, no, limited. Lerd, lerd. Right, trading account for the month, month, ended 31 Jan 2016. Right, so we have dollar sign. All right, so sales revenue okay so you see now let's just take a look at the information then read the information let's go purchases we spent 15,000 to buy goods we sold 13,000 sorry we sold goods at a value sorry and the value of selling price the revenue earned from the sale of those goods was, was 13,000 now yeah if you bought goods at 15 and sold at 13 you made a loss clearly but we have inventory on hand which means there are some goods we have not sold. And if you have not sold those goods yet, you cannot make a profit. Therefore, you cannot include those goods in the calculation of your profit. Those are not part of your cost of goods sold. Listen to the phrase, cost of goods sold. If you haven't sold the goods, you cannot include their cost in the calculation of profit. Okay? So what do we do, therefore? Well, first thing we're going to do, actually, is we're going to have a second column. Because if you try to put all this information in the same column, it's going to look a bit jumbled. Just follow me for a second, right? The rightmost column is used for the major items. Your sales revenue. This is 13,000 in this case. And don't forget we're putting less, oops, right? Less cost of sales. So we have purchases. Purchases totaled 15,000, sorry. And we have to minus the <coughs> closing stock. which totals $5,000. So if you bought 5,000 worth of goods, but after you sold a quantity, you still had five, you bought 15,000 worth of goods, sorry. And you sold, sorry, you were left with 5,000 after you made all the sales. So if you bought 15 and you're left with five, it means you sold the difference, which was 10. So $10,000 worth of goods was what was sold. And the 10,000 is therefore the cost of the goods that were sold or the cost of your sales, right? Now, if you're using cost of sales, um, stay consistent with your terminology. So $10,000 worth of goods were sold at a value, at a price of $13,000. So guess what? You made a profit of $3,000. All right, so that's gross profit. So once again, the biggest change in this question was that we had some stock left back at end that was not sold. We had to subtract that or extract that from the value of purchases in order to find the cost of the goods that were actually sold. Once again, you cannot make a profit on what you didn't sell. Therefore, if you just took 13 and minus the 15, you'd have gotten a loss of 2,000. And that was not a loss. Sorry, that is not a correct calculation. You did not make a loss. It didn't sell all the goods. You can only calculate profit on what you have sold. All right. Anyhow, I don't want to get overly redundant, repetitive and redundant. So let's move on from there. All right. So <clears throat> let's take a look at the question again. Oops. Sorry. What's going on? Uh, all right. So here we go. In question three, the companies from question two above continued operations in February 2016 bringing forward <coughs> the stock that remained unsold at the end of the previous month. 
So the stock that remained that was unsold at the end of the previous month, you don't just throw it away. No, you bring it forward to the next month to sell because why? You want to make a profit on whatever you buy. You don't just buy it just for fun. No, you buy it to make a profit. Right? Now they each purchased additional stock at the start of February, right? And at the end of the month, they each had a quantity of stock that remained unsold. So we brought forward stuff from last month, we bought more stock, we sold some, and we still had some left. So how are we going to deal with this now? Well, let's take, so we have to calculate gross profits using a trading account format. All right, cool. So once again, we're just going to hide or no. I don't know. Oops. No limited. Trading account. All right. For the month ended. I think 20, so it was 2016, right? So 29 of February, 2016. That was a leap year. So as you see, oh no, it was centered already. <sighs> okay, cool. So the first thing, of course, remember the trading account is an elaborate version of a simple formula for profit: selling price minus cost price. The sales revenue is your selling price, selling price item, right? And that is twenty-four thousand in this case. So we're going to minus the cost of, let's do cost of goods sold this time, right? Cost of goods sold. Okay, now we brought forward some stock from the previous period, all right? Opening stock. I know some people use the word inventory, I mean the same thing is less the type opening stock. That's all for now, right? <laughs> opening stock 5,000, let's say bring forward that stock. Now we add the purchases. The purchases is $15,000. So the total value of the goods that we have for sale is 20. This here is called the cost of the goods that are available for sale. Right? And like I said, this sentence to, to me just was a bunch of words strung together. I did not latch onto the meaning when I was in form four, form five, even form six. It was just the it was just a sentence with no meaning to me. Something to be put there. When I finally understood what it meant, it, it made more sense. I mean, obviously, right? So once again, my attempt to explain this is that this here is the cost price of the goods that you have bought and that are available for sale, right? I'm making some noise here. Sorry, whoops, we're shaking. Right, okay, sorry. So cost of goods available for sale. And what do we do? So we have some stock left at N, right? What's the closing stock? Inventory on hand at N is 2,000. So what do we do with closing stock in order to find cost of goods sold? We have to subtract it, right? So we're going to do less, right? Cost of, sorry, less closing stock, my bad. Less closing stock. Closing stock is 2,000. What did I, what, what is that? No, okay, okay, no, hold on, all right. Not sure what happened there. <laughs> I, pr I definitely pressed the wrong button, right? So it's 2000, right? Okay, cool. So if we subtract those two, we get 18,000. And then all we have to do is find a difference there. So once again, let me just recap that very briefly, right? So we sold goods at a value of 24,000. That's the amount that we earned by selling the goods. What, what goods did we sell? Well, we started up with $5,000 worth of goods at the start of the month. We bought $15,000 worth of goods on top of those 5,000, which gave us 20,000 available for sale. That's the cost of the goods available for sale. At the end of the month, we had $2,000 worth of goods left on hand. This has to be subtracted from the cost of goods available for sale because what we need is the cost price of the goods that were sold to match with the selling price of the goods that were sold. Right? So we have to, and that's something called the matching principle. That's how you calculate profit. Right? Well, that's not the whole matching principle. It's a bit more elaborate, but we have to match the revenue earned with the cost incurred in the generation of that revenue. Right, so this item here is the cost of goods sold, right, 18,000. 
And once again, we got that by taking the closing stock away from the cost of goods available for sale. And take your cost of goods available, you add your opening stock, you brought forward to the purchases, right? So what you had before plus what you bought now will give you what you have available. All right, now, our last item is gross profit. Okay, so, I don't know limited, right, so sales 24,000, opening stock, plus purchases, right, gives us the value of goods available. We subtract the stock remaining at end because it was unsold. You can't make a profit on what you didn't sell. What we're left with after taking the 2,000 from the 20 is 18,000. That is the cost price of the goods that was sold. We're matching the cost price of the goods sold with the selling price of the goods sold. Selling price minus cost price will give us profit. All right. Okay. Now, let's go again. Example four. So, we have both stocks accounted for. What about another item? So, for those of you who may, um, may order food to be brought to your house, right? I know in Trinidad, a lot of you guys order KFC, some of you guys order Domino's, right? Um, when you order food to be delivered to your house, let's say there was a, a, a sandwich special, and the sandwich special was, let's just say, $25. Is it just the $25 you'll have to pay when the food is brought to your home? Mm -mm. No, you have to pay what? Delivery. So the same thing happens with trading entities. A lot of times, trading entities will not go out and buy the goods and bring them back. They might order online, right? Or as, an ex as another example, I could have used, right? I could have said, a lot of you guys order things off, an, off of Amazon, <coughs> and you live in the Caribbean. <coughs> Sorry, and you have a shipping service, or a skybox as we call it in Trinidad, that brings it to you. But that's not a free service. You pay for delivery, right? So how it ties in here is that when companies or entities purchase goods and they have them delivered and it costs them money to have them delivered, that cost of delivery forms part of the cost of the, uh, of the stock, right? That is actually part of the definition of cost. Any money that is spent to acquire, not just to acquire or buy the item, but to receive it, to bring it to you and to put it in saleable or usable condition is part of the cost of the asset. Right. Now, we're not going to get into a whole discourse about that just yet because that, that is more in line for depreciation, but that's the next video, but it's coming by the way. Right? I'm going to try to get to you guys before the exam, but I can't promise because things are a little busy. Right? I'm stealing some time to make this video. As you could tell, I couldn't even get when class was, class was quiet. Right? So I'm, I apologize again for the excess noise in the background. Okay, so let's get back to the question. So in this particular case, what's going to happen is we're going to have some delivery charges. Right, and how do we deal with that? So the companies from question three above continued operations in March 2016, bringing forward the stock that remained unsold at the end of the previous month. So once again, the closing stock from one month becomes the opening stock for the following month. Right, the each, they each purchased additional stock at the start of March and had to pay delivery charges on their purchases. At the end of the month, they each had a quantity of stock that remained unsold calculate their gross profits using a trading account format for the month ending March 31st, 2016. Okay, so, like I was saying, um, this is once again, hi, do, no, let me see, uh, lord, lord, lord of mercy. All right, this is the trading account uh, for the month ended 31st, March 26th. Whoop. 2106, yeah, I clearly jumped like 90 years ahead, right? Okay, so what we're gonna do here is we're gonna just put that, oh, okay, cool. Oh, we're gonna need one more column. I'll show you why. So, we have our sales revenue. So once again, remember, the trading account is an elaborate version of a very simple formula. Selling price minus cost price. The bulk of the work has to do with calculating cost price because we have complications. We might have, we mightn't sell all the stock, we bought, which means we have a closing stock, which you'll have to subtract to find your cost of goods sold. If you have a closing stock at the end of one month, it's brought forward to the next month, and you have an opening stock, which is going to increase your cost of goods available, right? Now, let's just put in these items where in sales revenue, 60,000, right? Less cost of goods sold, right? So we have opening stock. Opening stock is $2,000. 
and we have to add purchases but the purchases figure of 44,000 has to be augmented because we have the delivery charges which is traditionally called carriage inwards right carriage inwards in this case is one thousand dollars all right so now some people call this item gross purchases right um you can call it that if you want i don't call it anything really sometimes right so once again the purchases figure that has to be added here is now 45 because this is the what you call the list price, the price on the on the price star or the price online you see, and this extra is the delivery, the carriage inwards. Okay, so you have to add the delivery charges on those goods to the price of the goods in order to get the cost of the goods. It's a very important point. Now, what do we do? We run the same program. So opening stock plus purchases. Oops, sorry. All right, so that gives us the cost of goods available for sale. So once again, this fancy thing simply means the cost price of the goods that are available for us to sell to the consumer, to our customers. And it's we have inventory on hand at end at $7,000. So closing, closing stock, stock. Right, uh, that's $7,000. Sorry, right? Um, so, sorry, I know that was a bit quick. Let me just recap again. So we had opening stock of 2,000. We bought goods at 44,000. Play delivery on top of that of 1,000. So that's 45. 45 and two is 47. That's the cost of the goods available for sale. At the end of the month, we had 7,000 left, which means that we sold out of the 7,000 that was sold and if seven, out of the 47 that we had available, if we had 7 left, it means we sold 40, right? And if we sold 40,000 worth of goods, that is the cost of the goods that were sold. Oops. All we have to do there for now is subtract that from that. And that will give us our gross profit. Right. So, what we have going on here, clearly, is the growth of the items in the, sorry, not the growth, sorry, the increase in the number of items in your trading account, more detail, right? But what's important is you need to understand why we are doing what we're doing, right? We don't just keep adding things willy-nilly. These are real-life considerations. Right? So we need to know how to be able to deal with these things in order to be able to construct a trading account. All right. Now, um, let's get to the next, the last example where we have the returns items. Right. So let's just clear that out. Scroll back this way. And what we're going to do is maximize this. And we're going to read through the last item here. Right. So the companies from question four above continued operations in April 2016, bringing forward the stock that remained unsold at the end of the previous month. They each purchased additional stock at the start of April and had to pay delivery charges on their purchases. During the course of the month, the companies returned some goods to their suppliers and also had returns made by, to them by customers. At the end of the month, they each had a quantity of stock that remained unsold. Calculate their gross profits. Okay, so returns. Returns are uh, a, a fact of business, right? Sometimes we buy things that end up being the wrong size, the wrong color, they don't work, and we carry them back. We return goods to the suppliers. Sometimes, well, same thing, and sometimes the suppliers, uh, as a returns in for them, and sometimes they may have to send back goods to their suppliers, right? So as a returns out for them. So what effect, what if, wait, well, yeah, what, what, how do the returns affect the trading account? Do they affect them at all? Let's think about returns in words. If you sold goods, and you say, okay, look, I've sold 10,000 worth of goods. I've made $10,000. Great. But then somebody comes back and says, hey, you know something? Um, these things were the wrong size. They didn't, they didn't really fit. So I need, I need my money back, please. And that's 1,000 worth of goods. So you don't have to give that person back $1,000. So you kind of like, your revenue kind of went down. So returns inwards decreases revenue. So what we need to do, therefore, is if we have any returns inwards, we have to subtract it from sales. Right? That's the first thing. Now returns outwards. So if we bought goods, let's say worth 
5,000. And we realized about 2,000 worth of them, they were expired or whatever the case was, the supplier didn't check it properly. So we sent back those goods. So if you bought 5,000 worth of goods and you send back 2,000 worth of goods, you really only bought 3,000 worth of goods. So what effect did the returns have on the purchases? It decreased it. So if you have returns outwards, you have to subtract it from purchases. So we have things going on here now, right? So let's head up very quickly, right? I do no limited, aha, no alert anymore, right? This is the trading account for the month ended 30th, right, April 2016. Sorry, in 17. All right, so cool. So we have sales revenue. So once again, the trading account is an elaborate way of doing what? Selling price minus cost price. The cost price is where we have a lot of work to go through. But now we've seen that sales revenue has one adjustment that can be made to it, right? There could be more, but let's keep it simple for now. Like I said, I like to give you all things in bite-sized pieces so they don't choke on it, here or up here. If you choke on it, that's no bueno, okay? So sales revenue, right, $48,000. Less. Well, somebody just said an end game spoiler. So I think I'll go and deal with that. Not sure we're going on there. I don't have any changes in book one. All right. So net sales. All right. So. One minute. Right, sorry, I had to take a pause for a cause. They were talking about some Avengers and game spoilers on the inside there, and I know it had some people who didn't see it, so I had to go and act. All right, sorry, where was I? Okay, so like I was saying, returns in woods is when customers return goods to us. Essentially what happens is that we end up unearning revenue. So what happens then is revenue has to decrease, so you subtract returns from your sales revenue, and you get net sales. Net is a word that means after whatever was supposed to be deducted has been deducted, okay? So net sales simply means sales after any deductions have been made. <clears throat> what do we do then after? We have to find the cost of goods sold, right? That's the cost price of the goods that were sold. And we need to find profit, it's selling price minus cost price. So we have opening stock, which is 7,000 in this case. <clears throat> so the purchases has two adjustments. It doesn't matter the order in which you put the adjustments. There is no one right way to do an income statement. I know your teachers might tell you that there is one right way. That is not necessarily true because there is no one there's no one type of company there are different types of companies that have different reporting needs and you can have different formats most times it's revenues or incomes minus expenditure how they present that is really up to them and you know, I don't want to get into a whole discussion about accounting standards I'm not a professional on that matter but I have done my fair share of reading on the matter and <clears throat> there is no one right way right okay so we're gonna add the carriage inwards first, right? I like to bulk it up first and then decrease it. So add carriage inwards is 2,000, all right? By the way, don't worry ahead too much about the bracketed items. That's just how I present my work. Um, that's just how I was trained and I'm just accustomed to it automatically. I'm real sorry if it's confusing anybody. I hope it's not, okay. All right, so I, I don't know a name for that item. Some people call it gross purchases. You can call it that if you want. Nothing is wrong with that. Now we have to just have we minus returns inwards from sales, returns outwards. Returns outwards is when we send back goods to the supplier. And what happens therefore is that we do not have to pay for those goods or we get back money. So our expense has decreased. So we have to subtract returns outwards, 1,000. Right, now that there is our net purchases. 
and of course this purchases sorry purchases an opening stock or net purchases in this particular case will give us the cost of goods available for sale and from that all we have to do is minus what closing stock which in this case is 1500 and that gives us our what cost of goods sold right so that cost of goods so once again is this cost price of the goods that were sold and when you subtract it from your selling price so your net sales sorry you get your gross it goes it goes it goes profit right growth right gross profit all right so as you guys have seen I have taken you through the different iterations of the trading account it can start as simply as sales minus cost of sales or revenue minus income income minus expenditure if it's a trading account and you're talking about stock and that kind of stuff sales minus cost of sales or sales minus purchases if you have no stock items right given your gross profit from there we said okay look if we had stock left over what do we do well in that case you have to subtract the stock closing stock from the purchases because you cannot make a profit on what you have not yet sold and this item here remember we're trying to do what selling price minus cost price if you did not sell goods you have no selling price to match with the cost price you have no revenue to match with the expenditure therefore you cannot calculate profit in that instance you can only match expenditure on what has been sold with the revenue on what has been sold if something is unsold you have to subtract that value from the purchases figure from that we added open in stock so if you have stuff unsold at the end of a period it comes forward it's not thrown away that in, in, in conjunction with your new purchases will give you your cost of goods available for sale now once again if we have any closing stock it's subtracted from that because why if you cannot make a profit on what you have not yet sold that therefore will give you your cost of goods sold that's the cost price item to match with the sales revenue the selling price item and selling price minus cost prices profit after we did that we said okay look your new item is what about if we had to pay for delivery of goods that's carriage inwards anything you have to pay to get the goods from the supplier to you anything you have to pay is part of the cost of the goods right if you're bringing something from away whether it's from the states or england you have to pay the price online for it you have to pay shipping to the skybox or the freight forwarder in whatever country it is you have to pay shipping for that freight forwarder to bring it to you you have to pay probably vat and import tariffs all that stuff is part of the cost of it right it's not just the price online if you're buying stuff online so here thankfully it's just carriage inwards which is just delivery charges on goods that's added to purchases before we add it to open in stock right i don't usually put a narration here some people tell me they put gross purchases that's fine the combination of open in stock and the purchases gives us the cost of goods available for sale once again what do we subtract from that closing stock why because you cannot make a profit on what you haven't sold that gives us the cost of goods sold the cost price or the cost value of the goods that were sold and how do we calculate profit selling price the revenue from the goods that were sold minus cost price the cost of the goods that were sold that'll give us profit the last consideration we had to view was the um, returns if some if we sold goods and some return to us that will decrease revenue hence you have to subtract returns inwards from sales if you bought, bought goods and you, you send some back that will decrease your purchases therefore you have to subtract it from purchases all right um, so right that bulked up this section here but once again it came down to open in stock plus purchases net purchases in this case net is a word that means after whatever was supposed to be deducted has been deducted just like here sales revenue minus returns inwards is net sales so net purchases and open in stock gives us cost of goods available for sale and what do we subtract from that the closing stock why because to calculate profit you have to match the revenue earned with the expenditure incurred you have to match the selling price with the cost price of what was sold if you still have stock on hand it means it was not sold and you cannot make a profit on what you have not yet sold so that's why you subtract closing stock 
from the cost of goods available. It gives you the cost of goods sold, and you subtract that from your net sales to give you gross profit. All right, so I hope um, at this point in time, you have a better understanding of the trading account. Now, I know in, most of you guys are not gonna memorize this by magic. It takes a lot of work, a lot of doing these over and over for it to stick in your brain. But I hope with my explanation, it will, that will be easier now because hopefully you, under, you better understand why you are doing what you are doing. And that helps immensely, in my opinion, right? Now, um, I made up an acronym with my other, my accounts class my students to help us try to remember the order of these things and here's a bit of a story with that acronym right now this story um, involves some alcohol consumption and I am NOT advocating any al alcohol consumption by any underage person I'm just relaying a story that's supposed to help us remember the order of these things so the story goes as such I had a student well, I had many students. And this one, what, you know, they could not wait for exams to be finished. They were fed up of accounts, fed up of maths, ad maths, everything. They just wanted CSEC to be over. And of course, all of them go into whatever parties they're going to. And of course, we know these kids not just drinking soft drink. What they're drinking? <clears throat> not soft drink. So, one of them heard um, there's a drink called Ciroc, a vodka. And he was very interested in this syrup, actually, was it a he or was it a she? Whatever, it was a student. And this student decided they're going on this boat cruise and they're gonna drink syrup. And clearly it, 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 um, it really wasn't syrup because they didn't get drunk, thankfully. I think the bartender was actually being mindful and being um, making some moral choices. But the person was convinced it was syrup they were drinking. And the next time they had messaged me, um, or I messaged them to find out how results went and they were telling me what is, they went to this party and they drank so much and they had to, they had a, well, you know when you drink plenty, your bladder gets full, right? And when your bladder gets full, it has to be emptied. So they had a serious pee because of Cerox. So remember that, serious pee, Cerox. So S for sales, returns inwards, and we have opening stock, serious P, C. We have returns outwards, right? And we have closing stock. So if we put all of that in one line, going horizontally, Sirius P. Serox. All right, so once again, I'm not advocating that any of you underage people go and drink alcohol, don't do it, all right? I'm just giving you some, a funny story. I, I think it wasn't entirely funny. My delivery wasn't the best. I, I acknowledge that, I apologize. I'm gonna work on that going forward, right? Um, so yes, they had a serious P because of Serox. So if you could remember this little acronym, it'll help to put things in perspective as to what goes, oh, sorry, I have a space there. It's supposed to have remember what goes where and in what order, right? Um, another point on it very quickly, um, a lot of people ask me, well, how am I supposed to know what goes in what column? It, it takes practice. My advice, the rightmost column is gonna have the fewest items. You're gonna have the major items. Your net sales, your cost of goods sold, and your gross profit. With the exception of gross profit, anytime you have a working to get any of these items, you have to go one space to the left. Net sales was sales minus returns inwards. I went one space to the left to get that working. Cost of goods sold was open in stock plus purchases minus closing stock. That's one space to the left. Open in stock and closing stock had no working involved. Purchases did. So I went one space to the left. Purchases plus carriage minus returns inwards, right? Do you have to show all of these sub totals? No, you don't. Once again, there's no one right way to do an income statement. So don't think that I am showing you a wrong way or your teacher showed you a wrong way. They are all acceptable. If the question specifies you need to show your cost of goods available, then you need to show it. There was actually a question in re a recent paper where they gave you cost of goods available and closing stock. So they saved you a lot of this work here. All right. Anyhow. So guys, um, I know I kind of went over the time that I wanted to spend on this video, but I, I think it's for a good cause. So I'm, I'm, I'm th I thank you. I congratulate you for staying for watching the video to the end. Um, before I go, a couple of things. Um, one, 
I want to say a special thank you to Mr. Kerwin Springer for giving me a shout out on one of his videos recently. Um, I appreciate it, sir. Thank you very much. And the next shout out is to Mr. Nicholas Beausoleil, who uh, has been following my YouTube page since day one. Uh, he is from St. Lucia, and today, which is May the 7th, is his birthday. So, Nicholas, happy birthday, right? I appreciate you messaging me and asking me questions. Um, and I, I, I applaud your attempts to get better at PUA and to, to really make a good effort to be successful in this topic and in all of the subjects. I hope you have a great day and I hope you see many, many, many more happy birthdays and I wish you all the best in your exams. And I will say everybody watching this video too, guys, I wish you guys the best of luck. Um, give, it, give, it a, give it your best shot, all right? And don't be afraid um, if things don't turn out the way you want them to. Most times we, always, we can always make things better if we are willing to put in the work, all right? And you know, guys, I am way over my time for this video. Thanks once again. If you want to see full past paper solutions, I am, you can check out my Facebook page. I'm going to put a link in the description below. Uh, follow me on Instagram for some. I'll, I'm trying to put up some funny stories, um, <clears throat> but it's, it's a lot to manage now because exam, ex it's exam season. And we all know how things get around exam season. It gets pretty hectic. Okay? Anyhow, guys, I don't want this to go on for too long again, but thank you very much. And I'm going to see you in the next video. Have a good one. Bye.